Hello students, welcome back to our class. In this module, we are going to discuss what is vertical angle bisector theorem and its converse as well as Pythagoras theorem and its converse, Apollonius theorem and some applications on these theorems. So, the very first theorem that we are going to discuss is vertical angle bisector theorem. right? So, what is this theorem is all about <coughs> vertical angle bisector theorem, vertical angle bisector theorem. So, this theorem is also called as V A B theorem also that is what vertical angle bisector theorem. So, coming to this <coughs> vertical angle bisector theorem um, here we need to understand one thing that what do you mean by this vertical angle and what do you mean by the bisector of the vertical angle. So, for example, you are given a triangle this is one triangle for example, A, B, C and uh, this is the vertical angle if you consider B, C as the base and this is the bisector of the vertical angle it means this portion is equal to this portion let A D be the bisector of the vertical angle, then that bisector of the vertical angle divides the base into the ratio of other two sides. That is what is called vertical angle bisector theorem, that is what I am going to write the statement here. So, the statement of vertical angle bisector theorem, the bisector of the bisector of vertical angle the bisector of vertical angle of a triangle, the bisector of vertical angle of a triangle divides its base, divides its base into the ratio of, into the ratio of other two sides, into the ratio of other two sides. This is what we are going to prove. So, in order to prove this vertical angle bisector theorem, see here you need to prove that AD divides BC into the ratio of other two sides. I will write what is the information given according to the statement. Given that in triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, AD bisects which angle? angle B A C, A D bisects angle B A C that means this part of this angle and this part of the angle both are equal. What is this part? Angle B A D. So, angle B A D is equal to this part of the angle is nothing but C A D is equal to angle C A D which is equal to x write within bracket say I would write here this is x this is also x and what are you going to prove here you are going to prove that RTP is then it divides the base into the ratio of other two sides. How this D is dividing the base BC into the ratio of BD and DC. So, it means BD by DC is equal to BD by DC is equal to AB by AC which is equal to AB by AC. So, this is what you need to prove. Now, when you observe BD by DC is equal to AB by AC, then you can understand one thing here that BD by DC is equal to AB by AC. Definitely, this is one of the application of basic proportionality theorem, but if you want to apply basic proportionality theorem definitely there is a line which is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle, but there is no line which is drawn parallel. And see here clearly B D by D C. So, B D by D C it means this A D must be the line which is parallel, but how can that A D be the parallel line? We know we have to do one construction according to this. What is the construction making this A D is parallel? is parallel in the sense you will have to draw one line over here otherwise you will have to draw one line over here. So, I am going to draw a line that line is going to be some for example, this is a line okay, somewhere up to whatever the extent 
this line is drawn parallel to AD and it has to meet somewhere right, but how it has to meet? So, simultaneously you will have to produce B A also. So, when you produce B A then it would be here right. So, those two meet at this point let this point be something E ok. So, what is the construction here? The construction is draw C E parallel to D A draw C E parallel to D A to meet B A produced at E. Did you understand what is the construction? So, the construction is going to be draw C E parallel to D A to meet B A produced at a point E that is what the construction you will have to mention that construction also right. So, after the construction how are you going to prove this statement now it matters. So, why did we do that construction because of applying basic proportionality theorem see when you observe consider the C E as the base and A D is the line parallel to the base means if a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle then it divides the other two sides in the same ratio right according to the basic proportionality theorem. So, how does this A D dividing the other two sides B C and B E right B D by D C is equal to B A by A E that is what is according to basic proportionality theorem that is what I am going to mention here in triangle which triangle it is B E C in triangle B E C D A is a line parallel to C E, D A is a line parallel to C E therefore, by basic proportionality theorem basic proportionality theorem we can say that B D by D C is equal to B D by D C is equal to what is B D by D C equal to B A by A E is equal to B A by A E this is for example, the first information, but see what are we going to prove here? We are going to prove that B D by D C is equal to A B by A C. What we got now B D by D C is equal to B A by A E. See we almost got everything except one thing what is that? Here A C is there, here A E is there. So, what do you mean by that? It means your primary task is to prove that A C and A E both are equal. So, how is that so? that is what your concentration have to be there. So, your concentration should be on only to prove A C and A E both are equal. So, how is that possible? See once you observe there are a pair of parallel lines see A D is parallel to E C I am just drawing them here this is A D and this is E C right this is E C since these two lines are parallel lines there is a line drawn like this right what do you call this line for these two lines since these two lines are parallel lines then this line itself is said to be transversal line if this is a transversal line then what can you infer about this angle and this angle these two angles are said to be corresponding angles it means these two angles are equal since these two lines are parallel lines so will you be able to identify where those angles are located this is the line AD this is the line EC since this is X this is also equal to X because they are corresponding angles hope you understand why this is X and this is X right. So, coming to the next pair what is the next pair here see same AD EC so AD EC and see there is another line AC this is another line AC once you observe this is the line AC right if you observe this line AC then what do you call this angle and this angle yes those two angles are said to be interior alternate angles of course interior alternate angles also equal right. So, this is the angle X this is also angle X once you observe this triangle in this triangle AEC angle E is equal to angle C then what do you call the triangle if two angles are equal in a triangle then the triangle is said to be an isosceles triangle. So, triangle A E C is said to be an isosceles triangle if this is isosceles triangle then what can you infer about the sides which are opposite to the equal angles the sides opposite to equal angles also equal what do you mean by that the side opposite to this x is A E 
and the side opposite to this x is AC. Therefore, AE is equal to AC. So, if you substitute AC in the place of AE, therefore, BD by DC is equal to BA by AC. BD by DC equal to BA by AC. Matter over. Hope you understand how to prove this. Right. I will just write them briefly here. <coughs> Here this angle is equal to this angle, angle B A D, angle B A D is equal to angle A E C, angle A E C since they are corresponding angles and uh, what is this angle? Angle D A C R C A D, angle C A D which is equal to which angle A C E is equal to angle A C E since they are interior alternate angles right. But already we know that angle B A D is equal to angle C A D is equal to x right. So, B A D is equal to A E C which is also is equal to x and C A D is also is equal to x. So, that angle A E C is equal to x and A C E is also equal to x. Therefore, angle A E C is equal to angle A C E. Therefore, triangle A E C is isosceles. Since it is isosceles triangle, therefore, the sides opposite to equal angles are equal. In triangle A E C, in triangle A E C, A E is equal to A C, right. So, when you substitute A is equal to AC in the first equation, then the first equation will become BD by DC is equal to BA is nothing but AB by AE will become AC. So, this is what is called vertical angle bisector theorem. This is one of the most important theorem as I already shared with you in the previous class. By using this theorem, vertical angle bisector theorem, we prove some statements and we derive some formulas in coordinate geometry like in center and x center of triangle when all the three vertices of the triangle are given. So, that is what the importance of this chapter. Hope you understand. This is about vertical angle bisector theorem. Next, we are going to discuss about the very famous familiar theorem. What is that very famous familiar theorem? Everybody knows in geometry that theorem is Pythagorean theorem. Can anybody say what is Pythagorean theorem and where it is applicable? Yes, Pythagorean theorem is applicable in any right angled triangle. If one of the angle of a triangle is right angle, then the triangle is said to be right angled triangle. So, I am going to prove that right angled triangle theorem that is Pythagoras theorem by using our two ways. Of course, Pythagoras theorem has many number of ways to prove, but I am going to uh, share with you two theorems like two methods of proofs. You understand? How do you go to prove Pythagorean theorem according to whatever um, suggested by the CBSE uh, like in our NCRT book and out of curiosity we discuss one more theorem. So, first of all, what is this uh, Pythagoras theorem is all about? First, I will write what is Pythagoras theorem. See, let us have a triangle and what kind of triangle this is? It is a right angle triangle. In right angle triangle, one of the angle is equal to right angle. For example, this is B and this is A and this is C. If you consider side opposite to A is small a, opposite to B is small c, opposite to C is small uh, opposite to C is small c and here B is the greatest side than A as well as C, right? Because B is the hypotenuse. So, B is obviously more than A and B is obviously more than C. Then, what is that Pythagoras theorem talks about? The square of hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse there? The side which is opposite to the right vertex is said to be the hypotenuse. Otherwise, the longest side of right angle triangle is said to be the hypotenuse. So, the square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of squares of other two sides, right? So, square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of squares of other two sides means b square is equal to c square plus a square. This is what you call it as Pythagoras theorem, right? I am <coughs> I am going to prove this Pythagoras theorem by one of the strategies. That strategies is, uh, let me take one 
let me take one square okay i am taking a square so this is a square in which this is a square for example p q r s is a square in which every single side is divided by a point in equal ratio in which ratio equal ratio for example uh, let us start from here this is a point sum a it is dividing p q into the ratio of small a and small b and again another point let it be some b which is also dividing q r into the ratio of a and b and another point that i am taking here so this point c is also dividing r s into the ratio of a is to b and one more point that i am taking here some d also dividing this s p into the ratio of a is to b right so when you join all these points simultaneously i am joining the point simultaneously right so when you join them simultaneously there is a quadrilateral formed can you say what kind of quadrilateral it is and what about the sides of this particular quadrilateral a b c d see here if you consider any one of these right angled triangles formed because each triangle is a right angle triangle such that each angle of a square is right angle so that every single angle of pqrs is right angle and then see here this is right angle triangle 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 by using s a s congruence every single right angle triangle is congruent to another right if all triangles are congruent then definitely by cbct ab is equal to bc is equal to cd is equal to da all the four sides are equal if all the four sides are equal can you say that it is a square we cannot because all the four sides are equal in rhombus also so that you need to prove one of the angles of this quadrilateral should be 90 degrees then we can happily say that it is a square for that i know about all the four sides are equal this side equal to this side equal to this side equal to this side let all the four sides are some c and this is c and this is c and this is also c and see here this is 90 degrees this angle is already 90 degrees and i don't know what is the value of this for example this is x okay if this is 90 this is x what about this angle obviously this angle is 90 minus x okay if this is 90 minus x and what about this angle this angle is also equal to because these two triangles are congruent right since these two are congruent if this is x this is also x once you observe this entire angle at d angle at d for example this angle is equal to some theta sum of all these three angles is equal to 180 according to angle sum property of triangle so therefore x plus theta plus 90 minus x is equal to 180 degrees so that minus x plus x cancel so when you transpose 90 degrees that side therefore theta is equal to 180 minus 90 is equal to 90 degrees what does it mean this is purely a square you understand so that a b c d is a square now what i want to uh, do here is see this p q r s square is divided into 1 2 3 4 five parts so that area of p q r s is equal to area of a b c d plus area of four triangles do you agree with me that is what the strategy that i am going to apply here right so the strategy is going to be area of p q r s what is area of p q r s that is side square because this is a square right so side square is a plus b whole square is equal to area of four triangles each triangle is right angle triangle of course the sides are equal so that there are four right angle triangles four into each right angle triangle area is half into base into corresponding height plus this area this is also square area of square is equal to c square what is a plus b whole square a square plus b square 
plus 2 a b and this is 2 1s 2 2s are 4 transpose 2 a b also that side minus 2 a b which is equal to c square. So, we can cancel 2 a b 2 a b. So, finally, you get c square is equal to a square plus b square. What is the c square? What is this a square and b square? See you take any one of the right angle triangle, any one of the right angle triangle. In this right angle triangle, c is the hypotenuse, a and b are two perpendicular sides. So, c square is equal to a square plus b square. This is what is called Pythagoras theorem. This is one of the interesting proofs of this Pythagoras theorem. Hope you understand and you enjoyed if, uh, if I am not wrong. Thank you.